Hello again, everyone. This is the Venom Developer Introductory Session number five. And in previous session, we learned how to create tokens and how to interact them within your smart contracts and also your scripts. And today is highly anticipated session because now we are we will have some fun with NFTs. So let's recap what's NFT. Uh, NFT is a like a unique certificate on, on chain tied to some uh, unique ID and belonging to some owner. Uh, so uh, as opposed to fungible tokens, uh, NFTs are only exist in one instance. And uh, the way how we do it in Ethereum is uh, li likewise, in ERC20, we create a mapping with owners, uh, which stores like which ID is owned by whom. And uh, in another mapping, we have this token U URIs, which maps uh, token ID to its actual content. And usually, in, in within the token URI, we put a, some link where metadata is stored. As opposed to ERC721. Tip 4, as in Tip 3, has the same approach of distributing the data across the blockchain so that we achieve more throughput and uh, don't have a central entry point for uh, our business logic interaction. And here uh, there is a collection root uh, smart contract which exists uh, in one instance for each collection and uh, users usually minting NFTs via this contract uh, which after mint NFT function is called it deploys separate instance for each NFT for each user and the transfer transferring logic um, is is implemented like just changing the owner field within this NFT smart contract so the NFT transactions are performed within a within this smart contract uh, NFT and uh, doesn't uh, doesn't involve any other smart contract interactions. Uh, actually, if you read uh, under the standards section in a non-fungible token page, you can find the full specification for uh, NFTs on Venom. And what we should know for now is that the the standard um, consists of several uh, sections and uh, a developer has an option to choose which uh, sub-standards to implement. Uh, what's inside this sub-standard? So tip 4.1 is the basic um, interface which specifies how to create NFTs, uh, what interface provided, is provided by the collection smart contract and what interface is provided by uh, NFT smart contract. So here it is. Uh, it basically just um, uh, defines a way to transfer NFTs and uh, what uh, data you can read within uh, the collection and the NFT smart contract. The tip 4.2 substandard defines how do we access the JSON met metadata. As opposed to 721 standard, we store the metadata on chain so that we can even render the JSON string depending on our uh, NFT attributes, which enables us to create cool experiences with programmable NFTs. The tip for the three is um, is uh, one of the most complicated parts of, of the of the NFT standard. So basically, it defines the the way to, to perform an on-chain indexing so that you can get uh, all the collection items or all the items owned by um, a specific owner by a single query to GraphQL interface. Uh, it has some tricky uh, mechanics to achieve that and uh, we, we won't dive into that. Just uh, You just need to know that there, there are these substandards and basically, in this workshop, we will create 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3 uh, collection and item, uh, which 
will be automatically picked up by our wallet and by uh, Explorer. Also, they're browsable in Explorer. Right, so let's proceed to coding. What do I have here? As you may remember, the smart contract from previous session, it left unchanged. And now I would like to turn it into NFT collection. So how, how do we do that? Before we start, we need to configure our Blocklift environment. So for that, uh, the first thing I want to do is to install tip4 package. I'm doing it with uh, save dev black. And in my Blocklift config.js, I want to uh, add external contract sesh section, uh, which will point to precompiled versions of index and index basis smart contracts, which I need. Uh, uh, I need these precompiled versions so that to, uh, to, to be sure that the binary code uh, doesn't change from the original version and it will be easily picked up by Explorer so our indexes are easily searchable uh, on the Explorer and by the Venom wallet. Right, so if you want your collection to be visible on Explorer and in wallets, please add this section. That, that's, that's pretty important thing. So how do we uh, implement NFT functionality? So I have the sample smart contract that I want to uh, inherit from base, uh, base collection. Let's import base collection as well from tip4 package. And since I'm inheriting from uh, this contract, let's look into it. So it, it has uh, different parameters in, in the constructor. So what I want to do is to uh, accept the same parameters in the original constructor and uh, invoke uh, the implementation in the base smart contract. The implementation for the constructor remains unchanged. I'm just deploying uh, wallet as the previous session. We won't touch that. What we want to do is to implement a functionality to mint NFTs. So I'm declaring a mint function. And I want it to be called by internal message. So I'm just declaring it as a external internal MSG. Right. Okay. And within this function, I just need to invoke mint NFT from the base implementation and pass JSON string here. This JSON field is uh, declared by tip 4.2 substandard and provides an interface to render JSON metadata. And what actually this function does, it deploys new NFT instance with, with all the parameters required for indexing and rendering the data. Okay, cool. To create NFT smart contract. So it's pretty simple. Let's import NFT base implementation from tip4 package and just declare a contract NFT inheriting it from NFT base. I also need override constructor function so that it explicitly called cool i will uh, leave the body of constructor unchanged because in the base implementation i have um, i have tvm accept and invocation of all uh, constructors defined for substandard implementations now let's deploy but before we deploy we need to adjust our deploy script so what it does basically, it gets uh, using a factory.get contract artifacts. It um, fetches the binaries for this index smart contracts, which make all indexing magic and integration with Explorer and Wallet. And uh, here I need just to change the names of my constructor params. Okay, the, there are some typing errors. That's because we didn't build our project yet. So let's invoke and page lock left build right okay we have our build folder appeared and all typing errors gone also uh, here i have prepared my json metadata with some sample sample uh, fields so that it will render some beautiful picture 
on the Explorer. All right, let's check it out. So I'm just going to uh, invoke the deployment script on random testnet. We have the address, and let's let's check it on the Explor Explorer. So you can see that it recognized as a collection. Uh, it uh, also parsed all the metadata and rendered a, a preview picture for the collection. And let's look on the tools.manum.rs and let's paste the API and try to mint our first NFT on Venom Devnet. Okay, so we have this mint function. Let's invoke it with internal message and value of one Venom. The expected result now is to see the minting event and uh, mint function called. Okay, I see my mint function call. And let's check. Yep, I see the event of NFT creation with all the details of, uh, of the new NFT address and who is the owner and the creator. All right, let's check uh, what changed. Okay, I, I see one item and the owner is, is my address. The last thing I want to do is I want to see it in my wallet. For that I'm going to an NFT section. And here I have previously deployed collection. So let's let's add this collection and verify that we actually own the NFT now. So I'm copying the collection address, importing it in my wallet. And opening the collection page, I see that I own a sample item. Right, so we deployed our first NFT and that's it.